The Vivo actually arrived on December 19th. I had it for about a week, and probably after the first couple hours, I realized I didn't want to compare it to phones. So I actually started to do a comparison against entry-level cameras. So I have the Sony a6000 that was released in 2014, and I have the Canon M50 that was released in 2018. They are both crop sensor cameras, so they are not full frame, and they both were outfitted with a 16 millimeter focal length lens, and it gives them approximately 24 to 26 depending on the camera because they do have slightly different crop factors between the two whereas the vivo actually has an effective 22 millimeter focal length part of the reason why i wanted to bring that up at the open is because of the differences between this being a one inch sensor this is being a crop sensor i'm filming this on a full frame sensor depending on what your aperture is set so this default aperture is 1.7 when you have to convert it to full frame you have to make sure you play the game. So I effectively set all the apertures around the full frame equivalent of 5.0. And I'll also link a video to Juan Bagnell. He actually goes through how to calculate this math and he did it with the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. All right, the one thing I wanted to do, and it's probably gonna be different, is I'm gonna put up some photos and I'm gonna put up some videos. So these are the first few photos that I took when I first got the camera. I went out and just started to kind of play with the main sensor. And again, I need to get the sensor to be at least competitive with these crop sensor bodies. So we're focusing on the one inch sensor. So I'm just gonna pass through some of the different photos of just the Vivo alone. I'll show you that first. So these are just me kind of getting to know the camera. And also I was scouting a place where I was gonna actually take the real photos. But you can see there's some nice building shots and on all the building shots, you see a lot of HDR. I made sure I had the sky in play and there was times where the sky was good of conditions and then there were some that were good. But the one shot I wanna look at in particular as we kind of look through this, these bamboo shots and I'll actually walk you through a video because when I get to the video comparison, I want it noted that I turned stabilization off. So these two bodies, and I would say most camera systems, if it's not Panasonic, have terrible in-body stabilization. Now you can add things to that, to stuff in post that will make them better. But I wanted to, I didn't want someone saying, oh, well, I don't particularly believe in this because you had the X90 Pro Plus stabilized, but you didn't have this these stabilized. So I didn't want to do that, and I don't think that would help anyone make their decision. So here's an example of me walking through some bamboo, and you can see as I start to get through it towards the other side, you'll see how it starts to get a little shaky. So I'm just trying to walk steady, but there's some movements, bamboos hitting me or what have you, and you can kind of see that. That was my baseline, but if we look here, note the first pictures that slide by. This was just me back in the lab taking some photos when I realized I really had to do this comparison this way. So I would like everyone to kind of be, this will be the first one to look at, and this is you making a decision if you think this was the Sony, this was the Canon M50, or the Vivo X90 Pro. And I just want to say, I have the Pixel 6a and the Pixel 7 Pro here because I have been saying this all year. If you want a point and shoot camera, just take it out of the pocket and get awesome photos. These are your friends. Now, I don't want anyone to make the mistake that getting a Vivo X90 Pro Plus, you won't be able to appreciate their auto mode. Their auto mode does a great job. The reason why, if you look at some reviews of the Vivo, if they tear in deep, is with the Vivo X70 Pro Plus, and some of their older systems, they were still doing what most Chinese manufacturers do, and that's what they'll do like a, a beauty skin effect, which is more popular over there. So it was it was kind of hurting them. And I'm gonna link a video to, to Grant Likes Tech. Grant is doing all the traditional comparisons, and I highly recommend him for this device. So he's comparing them. And one of the things that you'll see, you'll see a lot of selfie. And once I saw that, and I saw a couple others a few months ago from some of my overseas YouTubers, I knew right then and there that they corrected a lot of the issues with 
past vivos and they're also way further ahead than a lot of the chinese oems because again the it's a different market right and that's one thing that when we talk about camera systems like when i look at the sony a6000 the sony a6000 still is a camera just do a search for sony a6000 or just do, actually just do sony a6000 2023 2022 and you'll see tons of youtubers that have a7s3s a7s4 and you'll see when something breaks or they keep or without their stuff or something happens at a job they'll go out and buy a sony a6000 for photos now the one thing that held this thing back was it doesn't have a mic jack and the color science is off enough that if you don't have the white balance or you're in kind of an environment that it doesn't shine you'll see a lot of issues with the color that kind of throws it way off where you can with the new sony's you can kind of correct some of their color uh, imperfections and and i know there's people that always argue well you can art you can grade or what have you if you get into a spot with this since it's an 8-bit camera you can get into a spot where you if you don't really know what you're doing you can have some troubles whereas canon has great out the box even though my new favorite is panasonic i'm gonna throw up a couple of more photos so here's another photo and i want you in the comment to vote again this is the canon and 50 Sony a6000 or the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. Now, here's one that may throw you off. So, well, I'm intentionally throwing you off. Did I use the phone cameras? Which one did I use? Because I purposely messed up the focal length, right? And that's gonna throw some stuff in the background. So again, I ask you, is it the Vivo? Is it the Sony or is it the Canon? Now I've got, I'm gonna throw up a couple more pictures and a couple more videos. Now, what do you see here? Because one of the things that, what I learned over time is, and I'll, I'm, I'm, to help you out, I'm gonna throw up some product shots. So I'm gonna cycle through some product shots that show the Vivo versus one of the cameras. And maybe that'll give you a little bit, because I'm a little bit closer to the subject, maybe that'll help you a little bit more. But then we're going to go back and transition to a couple more photos. Now, I hope this video was helpful to you. And I know this is not a traditional first run video. But again, this camera system is so good that I have really no interest in, in comparing it against phones. And I think the work being done by a couple of creators is, a, is, is great. They're doing a great job and they're making you make informed decisions but i'm so interested in this sony imx 989 that i'm just going to refer you to them i've had no problem referring you to grant in the past he does a great job but i'm going to continue to have fun with this until i get probably started in the next couple of maybe two or three weeks where i'll start comparing this against phones but i want to do more on the on uh, against this now now i will say most portrait photographers, what they're going to do is they're going to not use this focal length. That's the one limitation here. So manufacturers are going to have to find a way to either get more out of this one inch sensor and emulate a, a bigger focal length, which will do some degradation to the photo, or they're going to have to include that on another sensor and use a different lens, right? To give you an example, a photographer is most likely going to use an 85 millimeter focal length, which is going to blur out the sun. Models really appreciate it because it just focuses on them and it, and it compresses the background. And that's something that you can't do with these things. So yes, did Vivo hurt the mirrorless camera? Yes. I will say this. When I start traveling to CES or different events, I'm typically going to have the Vivo with me and I can leave my camera systems at home. Now, they're great. I love them to death. I get great photos and there are things that I like about them that are better. Obviously, I can add lenses to take them to the next level that I can't do with this. Uh, all the photos and videos that you see in this video were done using the pro mode in this. So there are a lot of things that I'll talk about in the next video, like stuff that they have that um, lets you just do stuff like for reels and and shorts and TikTok. like they have all these different modes they still have all the bokeh modes and all that stuff typically with this phone i use the i'll use night mode like if i'm a little lazy night mode is fantastic but normally i'm always in 
pro mode. Now they do have like uh, super raw. They have all these other things that I, like I said, I will cover, but to say it this way, I personally believe that Marquez, when he came back to explain in this latest video that the, that he picked the iPhone, right? He showed a lot of shortcomings that you don't get with the Vivo. Now, Marquez has his opinion. I have mine. The Vivo X90 Pro Plus is far and away the best camera system. Now, it's going to be up to some other manufacturer to dethrone it this year. And I'll just say this. The early word out of China is this is a great phone. However, they have a surprise plan for us in July. You heard it here first. So I do have other videos on my channel that are related to Vivo and other photography. I'm about to take it to where I'm going to be doing a lot more of these comparisons where we go against mirrorless cameras and put them in situations where it's not just, okay, there's no depth of field. I'm pointing to something that's like a hundred feet away and they look the same. No, I'm going to involve depth of field. Now, obviously I can really make these go lower, you know, but I'm going to put them all in the same level field and we're going to see what happens. So if you're interested in seeing any more videos on Vivo, click here. Again, every moment watch is truly appreciated. And with that, the camera system of the year is out.